He is one of the biggest names in world business, and he came Jack Ma, worth more than $42 billion, and listed by Forbes as one of the most influential business people on the planet. So, 25 years old, don't worry. Any mistake is an income, is a wonderful revenue for you. So, I tell myself and told my young people, before 20 years old, be a good student. When you do entrepreneur, just learn some experience. Before 30 years old, follow somebody. Go to a small company. Normally in a big company, it is good to learn processing. You are a part of a big machine. But when you go to a small company, you learn the passion, you learn the dreams. You learn how to do a lot of things at one, one time. So before 30 years old, it's not which company you go, it's which boss you follow. It's very important. A good boss teach you differently. And before, th from 30 to 40 years old, you have to think very clearly. You're working for yourself if you really want to be entrepreneur. When you're 40 to 50 years old, you have to do all the things that you are good at. Don't try to drop into the new area. It's too late. You may be successful, but the, the rate of dying is too big. So 40 to 50, think about how can you focus on things that you are good at. But when you are 50 to 60 years old, work for the young people because young people can do better than you. So rely on them, invest on them, making sure they're good. So when you are over 60 years old, spend time for yourself. On the beach, sunshine, <laughs> right? It's too late for you to change normally. But I, this is my, my advice to the young people. 25 years old, make enough mistakes. Don't worry. You fall, you stand up. You fall, you stand up. Enjoy it. I mean, 25 oh. years old, enjoy the show, enjoy the show. I didn't have a rich father. Tried three times for university. All failed. I applied for Harvard for 10 times. All failed. They don't even want to see me. For the last time, I went to the teacher's college, which was considered the third or fourth class of my city. So I applied jobs for 30 times, got rejected. It was so difficult at that time. I was so frustrated because I taught in the university. My pay was $10 a month because I could not find a good job. In 1994, Discuss said, I'm going to do something called internet. And 23 of them against it. They said, this is a stupid idea. We have never heard about internet. And you know nothing about computer. And I never thought I was smart. Nobody believed that I could be successful because everybody said, well, this guy think differently, think crazily, you know, they think about something that never worked. I tried to borrow 3,000 US dollars from the banks. It took me three months, but I still cannot get it. We talked to over 30 or 40 venture capitalists. Everybody said, no, forget it. A lot of people said Alibaba is a terrible model. As I said, I believe it. I think this thing could be big. I never thought it would be that big like today. But I believe that something, something is waiting for me there. And I have to work hard to prove myself. And that was the tough experience. So we gather 50,000 US dollars from 18 founders. We started. For the first three years, we did not have even one dollar revenue from our business. It was not easy. Why it keeps on going ahead, going forward? Because I received lots of email of thanks from the customer. They say, this is such a great thing. We cannot pay you, but this thing helped us. If you keep on helping us, one day you will be successful. And I believe this. Little by little, we build up our business. Little by little, we build up our ecosystem of the infrastructure. And now after 16 years, we have an Alibaba group, we have a Tmall group, we have a Taobao group, we have Alipay. And people said, you are so smart. How could you make a company like that? Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, the Jack Welch, Larry Page, Mark Zuckerberg. The difference between those people and other people, they are always optimistic for the future. They never complain. They always try to solve the problems of the others. When you're optimistic, it's always opportunity. People, same here today. Jack, where is the opportunity? I don't have a job. I don't have this, I don't have that. We are at the best time of this century. The best assets you have is that you are young. Don't complain. Let the other people complain. The opportunity lie always lies where people complain. Think about 
how you can make things different. Is there anything I can do that make the difference? And then when you think about this, start to do it. I saw a lot of people, young people, have fantastic ideas every evening. But in the morning, they go to the office same again. Being an entrepreneur, you have to do the things before the other people do. You have to wake up before the other people wake up. You have to be more brave than the others. Use your instinct. Everything you do is to the need of the customer. To everybody, to any person, tomorrow is new. Make the move. Make the action. Whether investors believe in this or not, whether your friends believe it or not, whether your parents believe it or not, that's not important. You believe it. Your team believe it. And work day and night on this. That's how the things happen. Make enough mistakes. You fall, you stand up. Any mistake is an income, is a wonderful revenue. Don't worry about the money. Money follow the people. People should follow the dreams. If you have a dream, just to go ahead. I think nobody can conquer the world. We only can serve the world. Either work for the others or work for yourself. And I choose the way, work my, for myself. Working for myself, that means working for the society. If you really want to work for yourself, think about the others. Because only when the other people are successful, when the other people are happy, you will be successful, you will be happy. I think today people worry a lot about the world, about the economy, China, economy in the world. And, but I'm a very optimistic. When people start to worry, that, that is the opportunity is. I worry about the blood testing and she created uh, good things. And I think great innovations, great companies always happen in the tough times. The lives like uh, the music, you have uh, up, you have a down, you have a long, you have a short notes. And I, I like your American movie, life, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get, <laughs> right? So I'm pretty optimistic. The opportunity in the future for equality is huge. Because in the, in, in the last century, the IT is for big companies. The globalization is for big companies. But now with the technology, we can serve those 80% of the companies that have never been served. We can serve the 80% of the young people that have never been served. Technology for internet is so cheap, so easy to use. One of the reasons why we grow in China e-commerce so fast, much faster than the USA, because our infrastructure of commerce in China was too bad. When it is too bad, something happened and goes. Today we are working on the rural areas of China. I can never imagine that China, about 800 million people still live in the rural areas, are farmers. And there are about close to 200 million people. Their income is less than $1 per day. And before the internet, it's impossible for these guys to reach the PC because it's so difficult. Even people like me, I don't know how to use a PC. But now 80% of the farmers, those people using mobile phones. We have the mobile phones, the internet, the data. Things change a lot. So I'm excited about the future. People always worry, that's the, you know, I, I love the young kids sitting there and talking about the dream, the hopes, because if they have the hope, we have the hope. That's what I believe. We, we never know that we can grow so fast. In the past five months, we covered 4,500 villages. And these people, normally they, they use in very traditional way they t it took them like two, uh, we went to a rural area, it took them, the farmers, two hours to work to the downtown uh, in, in the middle of the town and buy things. But today, because the mobile phone, and we, we can deliver things to their home, to their village, within 72 hours. I remember there is a, well last week I read a very interesting thing, this is amazing. There is a girl, she told me a story. She said her grandfather, 92 years old, birthday. And for his life, he always wanted to try one Western-style food. But she, he lived in the rural areas. There's no such restaurant food. So she said, I tried on the internet, book a, a restaurant dinner for Western food, deliver to that village. And they finally, immediately find one restaurant. There are three guys. They took like a three days bus from, the, from Shanghai to that village made an Italian spaghetti and a beef for them for this 92 years old birthday. And the whole village was excited. Everybody said, wow, you can order food, rest, you know, rest, rest of style food. So buying almost everything. 
And also we're helping a lot of uh, fa farmers. They plant a lot of apples, great apples. But 90% of the apples rotted because there's nobody buy it. They normally buy by track. You know, if you sell the, uh, the, the apples, they sell whole track. And using the traditional way, they can, they can sell by whole basket of the uh, apples. But now, because of the internet, they sell by one by one. Each apple, they sell $1. Oh, you know, one IMB or two IMB for each. So the farmers will see using internet, they can buy and sell using the mobile phone. That changed their lives. And I think it's exciting. And people need examples when they see, well, the other, my neighbor make, made money through online to selling things. My neighbor made, you know, buy much interesting things online. People start to learn. And more, more people start to buy the mobile phones. We cannot, we cannot make all the factory, the mobile factories to sell phones to them. Only they know the mobile phone really works, help and change their lives, they start to buy the mobile phones. There's a big difference between American consumption because people say, well, you know, the economy is bad, so China consumption will be good low. No, totally different. You American love to spend tomorrow's money and the other people's money maybe, or maybe the coolest money. We Chinese love to save money. We are probably the largest country, uh, the, the de safe deposit in the whole world that we people, because we've been poor for so many years. When we made money, we put it in the banks because someday we know the disaster is coming so we can spend the money. So when the economy is bad, we still have the money to spend. You guys probably don't, you worry. And the second thing is that China being market, China been focusing on developing for the past 30 years, China government, so strong on investment, so strong on exporting, but they are too weak on the domestic consumptions. Domestic consumption is not driven by government, it's driven by entrepreneurship, driven by the market, not the government. So in the past two years, past 20 years, government is so strong, now they're getting weak. It's our opportunity, it's our show time to see the market economy, entrepreneurship, how we can develop the real Consumption. You know. I think if the China develop the great consumption, we have a 300 million middle class. In next 15 to 20 years, we're going to have half billion middle class. We need to import a lot. So when we start to import, that's a great. It's gonna, I, I worry a lot when we export. You know, when we export, we got a terrible sky, we have a terrible water, we have a terrible environment. When we start to import, we got to be better. So that's all the great opportunity, guys. Be happy about that. I always think about 19, what I, where I am. You know? 19, I've not uh, passed the examination for university yet. I failed three times. <laughs> but I'm not good at schooling. Well, yeah, that's why I give confidence to a lot of young people in China. If Jack Ma can, success, can be successful, 80% of the people can be successful. Well, equality. I, I would like to make a little bit of technology helping because yesterday I was joining the United Na UN uh, Women Conference about gender equality. And I think the first technology revolution happened 200 years ago in the UK, released the human body, the arm, stronger. The second technology revolution in the US is for energy, you can last long. But this technology of revolution, relief, release the brain. So this century is not a competition who is stronger, whose muscle is stronger, it's who is smarter, who is soft, who can listen. You, it's the a challenge of wisdom. So men and women are equal. On the internet, you can never see he's a woman or a man. And w on the internet, women can serve much better than, than men on the internet. And a man talking about a business, talking about you know, numbers, competition, they make business very cold. Women, they make business very cozy, lifestyle, and interesting. 50%, more than 50% of our shop owners, more than half, five million shop owners are women. And people love that. I mean, this is, this is the greatest thing I see that this century we see more and more women leaders, right, on the state leaders, and the presidents. And in, the, in the future, we're going to general secretary of the United Nations should be a woman leader. And this is the great century for equality. And I, I feel excited about that. Yeah, I, I am a strong believer that technology can make the world much better because people say China economy is getting slower. I'm happy about 7%, even 5%. Even 5% of the GDP of the number of China of the second large economy is big enough. But you, you don't expect China to keep on growing 11%. Because like a one, body, one human body, when you are 1.8 meters tall, you cannot keep on like a 10% growth every year. 
you have to grow the quality, your mind, the wisdom. So I think China needs new technology to solve these problems. And which today, the data, the, the, the clean technology, all these things that China is supposed to do, if we keep on the, tradition, the, the, the old ways, we'll go nowhere. But this is why I feel excited because people ask me, what is your dream now? Because I never thought I would be today. I can s s sit here talking to president. I'm like a guy you know, on the street and like failed three times for university, five times for, for high key schools. I applied for 10 times in Harvard school or rejected. I never thought because of the technology, because the internet give me this opportunity. So I think when I retire, I don't want the Chinese people have a terrible water to drink and safe for food and people, the money we make all spent in the hospital. That's disaster. So how we can use the technology to enable young people, the great chance of this world, don't worry about it. We got 1.4 billion people who were born in 1980s. They are the people of the internet times. They are going to have new ways to solve the world problems. The things you are worried about today, they can solve it. And human beings have the, these kind of worries for centuries. And young people can always solve it. And today, when you have a right direction, clean energy, you know, the, the, the climate change, all these issues, they will be solved. And these are the great opportunities ahead of us. I'm proud to be a global citizen. Today. Yeah, I was <clears throat> thinking about if, uh, what you say. Um, I think about when you, want, when you talk about uh, problems, you normally, like a politician, when you talk about opp opportunities that the business people, I was thinking about how we can use you know, all the problems that change the problem become the opportunity. And um, I, I don't know, I just feel excited when people talk about problems. I think that's, think about, if you can solve one of them, that's the chance. And today, nobody, in live in this century has so many opportunities and so many uh, tools they can use to change other people's life. And I think in, in the last century, which I called IT time, this century is called a DT time, data technology. IT is to empower yourself, make yourself strong. DT is to empower the others. When you empower the others, you empower your future, yourself. So when I listen to you talk, I agree and I think uh, that's why we were born in this century. That's why we, uh, how we can use the internet to help more people. Yeah, because I never thought we would be today. I never thought I would be today. I think uh, for my, you know, when I leave university, I thought just doing something and 10, 20 years later, I can go back to teach. I never know, I never realized I can achieve that much. When we look back today, we have our close to 70,000 excellent young people in my company. We have so much data, technology, inference, 700 million users. I think all the things does not belong to me. There must be something that somebody in the sky wants, Jack and your people should do something different. That was the thinking in the past 10 years always. But when our company went IPO today, we're like a 400 billion dollars market cap. This does not belong to us. And why we succeed? Because we support the young people, we support the small, medium-sized companies. We support the women. And because of supporting these people, they does succeed. So we believe, how can we last our success? We believe we should support the more young people. We should support the more SMEs. We should support the more women. If they are successful, we will be successful. That was, because I believe one thing, when you have a cup of two or three million dollars, that money you belong, belong to you. When you have 20 million dollars, you have a problems about money depreciation, you buy this stock or that stock. When you have more than 100 million dollars, 1 billion dollars, that money does not belong to you. It's the social responsibility. If people trust you, ask you to manage the money better. So, so that was the thinking. And then we decided, we say, we should make a economy that is big enough to, with that economy, we can enable every young people, every small business, every woman, globally. They want a global buy, global sell, global deliver, global pay, and global travel with the technology we're giving. We can create 100 million jobs for the world, 
Today, we create 33 million jobs for China. We hope, we hope the fifth largest economy of the world, that digital economy, can enable 100 million jobs for the world. We can enable 2 billion population in the world. They can shop and buy everywhere. And they can, we can create 10 million small business. They can be profitable through the internet. That was the vision. I don't know in my life can achieve that, but somebody will achieve it. If we continue to do it, if we cannot reach it in 10 years, why not 20 years, why not 30 years? People should continue to do it, and somebody, someday, if somebody really reached that, we feel very proud. We, we've been thinking internally, we discuss a lot about where in this world Alibaba should have our base labs that that should have our people that are working together to reach because the fifth largest economy does not belong to us, not, does not belong to Jack Ma and Ali. It belongs to the, the generation of this, this generation, belong to the world, belong to the, all the young people who believe in the future, belong to the people who believe the technology can enable people. A lot of people today have a lot of complaints, say, I don't have opportunity. I complain a lot when I was young and suddenly realized complaint does not solve any problem. Where the opportunity always in the place where people complain. There are so many if there are so many opportunities in the world, in this world, because there are so many complaints. <laughs> if you can solve the complaint, one of the complaints, that's the opportunity. So this is what we we made. I think young people, if my advice to be an entrepreneur, don't be scared of failure or setbacks and don't give up. There People, there are a lot of books written about Alibaba, about me, which I'm scared of. One day I was reading on a, on a, on a plane, that's many years ago, in the newspaper. I was reading a, a, a guy, introducing a guy, very great. And finally, I think people are talking about me. No, that's not me. <laughs> it, was, it was an article about a, a great person. And then finally I find out they are talking about me. I'm not that great. That's not me. Right. I want to say is that if there is a book I want to write, it's Alibaba 1001 Mistakes. We came today to now. We made so many mistakes. People say, you are lucky. Yes, we are very lucky. We've been only 19 years to, to today's size. But we've gone through so many tough situations. We made so many mistakes that people cannot Im imagine probably 90 years, just like Israel. For 70 years, your country grew from nothing to today. You have gone through so many tough experiences, and that will make you different. And I want to thank a lot of people that in the history that you know, these people made great things that made us. When we started the business, we had 18 founders, including me, 17 of them, uh, most of them my students, and most of them uh, well, today people think these 18 people, the, the smartest people uh, in China. We don't think we are smart. Honestly, we all graduate from the very poor schools. Um, the only thing we did was that we are very united. We all believe the future. We are all optimistic. And we learn through mistakes. We never give up. When Alibaba first IPO in 2007 in Hong Kong, uh, we had um, like uh, close to 500 millionaires. We made 500 millionaires, and I had a talk with uh, people in the room. I say, hey, everybody, now we are very successful. We are all millionaires. Do you think we are smarter than the others? People say, no. Do you think we work harder than the others? No. The early days, when we have, because we had a strange name, Alibaba, people say, uh, what, a, what a company. A lot of people think it's a company of telling lies. <laughs> we cannot even hire people. We say, if the people who, who is not that much disabled, we all hide them. Because nobody wants to join us. And, but we've gone through it. So I asked those 500 millionaires, there's one thing. Those people who think they're smart, after half a year, they're all gone. They start to build up their own. They don't believe our model. They don't believe by helping others, by helping small business, you can make money. Because that 20 years ago, only by helping big companies, you can make money. By helping small companies, you don't have a chance. So smart people left us. Those people believe they are excellent. The headhunting company all come. 
they headhunt our people. We are the people nobody even come to hand us. So we stayed, we have no choice, we don't have any company to go, but we believe our future. So after 10 years, we survived, and today the same. We don't believe those people, I think this is what I give advice to students in Harvard or Tsinghua. If you graduate from famous university, please respect the people who graduate from the poor schools. Those people like us graduate from a poor universities. Please respect yourself. We have chance if we work together. Of course, we would love to have uh, great students from Tel Aviv, from Tsinghua, or Harvard. But the most important is that you find the people with the fighting spirit, learning spirit, and this is we hire people for. Not because you which school you're from. Even to now. We said we would rather not having students from Beida and Tsinghua because we believe Beida and Tsinghua University should go to the small medium sized companies, not us. Because we are helping small medium sized companies. If we take all the talents away, because we have, today we have a lot of cash, we can give in high pay to get the best students from university. If the society is poor, no matter how strong you are, your company will be poor. So this is what we believe they should go to. They should go to SMEs, empower SMEs, and then we help together. That's what we believe. You have to have a strong will. Normally, if you want to be leader, leadership, leaders means loneliness. Leaders means responsibility. If you're responsible for one person, you are yourself. If you are responsible for 8 million people, you are Prime Minister of Israel. If you are responsible for 1.4 billion people, you are President of Xi Jinping. So, it's about responsibility. Not everybody would love to do that, and it's okay. But this is what I give my children. I want them to be happy and healthy. People worry about uh, high technology, but young people don't worry about it. I feel very few young people worry about the future. Only senior people worry about it. Ah, you know, one day when we, Alibaba used to be on PC, and then suddenly we moved to the mobile phone. A lot of people complain, ah, mobile phone too small, how can you do shopping on such a mobile phone screen? And later we realize because we generate, our eyes are shut, are getting old. Young people never thought, think it's a small. They think it's a big enough. Next to 30 years, the artificial intelligence, the robots, all the high tech will, will do a lot of, will replace a lot of jobs. This is for sure. When human being design invented Computers, human beings should know that computer will be much smarter than human beings. They remember, they calculate faster, and they never get upset. They always keep on doing things. But don't worry about it. Machine can never win human beings. Machine can do only things machine can do better. Human beings have hearts. Machine does only, machine only have chips. So what, what worries me about is the way the things, the cat, the, all the things we teach our kids today are how to remember more things, calculate faster, all these things, machine will do better. Next 30 years, what are the things we should teach our kids that they will be different, they can do better, they can do the things machine cannot do? This is I discussed with the president, they all agree. I think we should teach our kids how to be more innovative, how to be more creative, and how to be more constructive. Human side is more important than the, the knowledge. I think the past 200 years, human being made a huge progress because of the knowledge driven based education. I think next century, we should focus more on wisdom based, or the human based. So this is, I think, next 30 years, please pay special attention to the education system reform that our kids we never got dis disappointed because of the machine take a lot of jobs. There are a lot of jobs waiting for human beings. And next thing is I want to say is that pay attention to these uh, companies who have less than 30 employees. Please pay special attention to the young people who are below 30 years old because this is the generation who were born internet. They will change the world. So education is the key. By the way, we need a lot of social scientists in Alibaba because we have so many we are managing an economy over 700 million people. That's so complicated. One percent of the bad guys, we got seven million bad guys. And how to deal with it? Not all, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not only bad guys. Some people have a strange behavior, but it, 
so what Alibaba need does not only engineers and software programs. We need a lot of so psychologists, the social behavior experts, and polit. You know, this is something that we have to manage. So it's about the system. It's about the people, value, mission, and people training. That's the best. And then year two thousand two and three four, I spent a lot of time training our people with the value, mission. And professionalism, and then we got more managers, more leaders than most of the other startups that we started to do better. It's not about business model. Later, it's about create values for the others, and that that is very good advice for me. And we made Alibaba different, even to today. We are still so much mission driven, value driven, and I believe. We want to last 102 years. We were born 1999. Last century we had one year. We want to go through 100 years this century plus one year, 102 cross three centuries. So, in order to survive, we have to be mission driven, value driven, and people driven. Today we do e-commerce. Tomorrow may not. The day of tomorrow we don't know what we do. But if we're mission value driven, if we believe young people. If we want to supporting the other people to be more successful, there is always business model. There is always money to make. That's what we believe. <music>